Do you get uneasy when you have to prune out seedlings in your garden? Any bitty little plants that you've nourished from a seed that you've put in the soil? And then, and then everybody says, you've got to cut them, you've got to separate them, you've got to murder them. Well, you better get over it. Because you'll never, you'll never have full success unless you learn to kill. These beets were planted here after our first round of carrots did not come up. We had a lot of rain after planting carrots. Yeah, carrots take a really long time to germinate and they're pokey and they're a pain in the neck. Some of it just got washed out. You can't plant them too deep. You can't have them dry out and you certainly don't want them to wash away. But they washed away and so we replanted. And when we replanted, we planted a lot of seeds. We planted in beets and brassicas and other things. And so right now, I'm thinning out these beets and there's great need for that. Because if you don't, you can end up with itty bitty little things that don't ever give you what you want. You just end up with a little mess of naughty plants that grow up and don't ever spread out to their full potential and become useful, edible, harvestable. So beets actually, the seeds are, are a fruit. It's a compound fruit there. So it's got lots of little seeds inside of it. So you'll get multiple germination happening when you plant what you think is one seed, but it's actually a group of seeds dried into a little fruit. So they're already messy and they really desperately need thinning. And I think we overplanted them too. So really, they should be every couple of inches at this point and then that leaves a little space in case cutworms decide to take some in between and then later we're gonna thin them out to maybe every six inches or so. But right now, we just wanna let these guys stop fighting with all the root competition and get to a point where they can spread out and really start to grow and then we're gonna thin them again and I'll cut every other one of these out again the next time. Now these carrots here are just in clusters and it's funny because some of the carrots just go right crazy right from the beginning just fine. Some of them don't wanna come up for a long time and then you know you end up with these big tufts of carrots where it looked like for a while we were not going to have carrots at all. They, they took their time and then they waited till it got cooler and then suddenly we've got carrots everywhere except for the areas that completely washed out and so we've got to go in and I want a carrot every few inches. These rows are actually about 18 inches apart and then in the row I really I want a couple of inches between each carrot. That's tons of space for the carrots. They're gonna develop. If I had less rain and less soil fertility, I could go even farther, put a carrot every six inches or something like that. But two to three inches, that's about right. Get a good bit of space, a nice shaped carrot. See, if you plant your carrots too close together, you get little weeny carrots. And you don't get good root development. You want good root development. I mean, it's a root crop, so you want them to get big and if they're all tight together you get these little twisty tiny little roots but if they're breathing a little better it's gonna be a lot better and I like to actually nip them down as I go instead of um, necessarily pulling them all particularly when they're close together if you pull them you're gonna end up with yanking the roots of the ones next to it so I want to do as little damage as possible by just nipping them off right close to the ground as I thin now I'm thinning some broccoli. And again, I'm only thinning them. This is the first pass, so I'm thinning them down to like a couple inches apart. In case there's a cutworm or a roving chicken or something like that. We're not taking the whole row out. Eventually, 
These broccoli will be over a foot apart, but we need to give them space to grow. So as they grow out, I thin them successively. I don't thin them all the way to their final level. I do it in a series of passes. So like a week or two from now, when they have filled out, these guys have started to fill up the space that they've been allotted. I could turn around then and thin them again, cut every other one out or even further. If they look like they're, they've got nice thick stems on them and they're ready to handle anything that nature throws at them, the rain and the animals and the bugs and everything else, no biggie. I'll just thin them out farther. Right now they're still weak little wimpy things and they'll stay weak little wimpy things unless I thin them. They actually really need that breathing room or they're not gonna fill out. And I'll show you a few weeks further down the road what this should be looking like. Because as the season goes on, I plant successively. And in some areas, I actually thinned earlier and I am reaping the benefit of having done that. This part of the garden actually got away from me. These should have been thinned two or three weeks ago. But things are growing slow right now. It's the winter, it's not a big deal. And it's important to be able to forgive yourself so you're in a good emotional state to help others. So in here, these are cabbages. And isn't this really sad? Now I could take these in and eat them in a salad or I can feed them to the chickens and the chickens love them. But it seems like it's super sad, right? Like if you had to buy transplants, you would get them maybe a little smaller than this and put them in the, uh, put them in your cart. And it's like $3.48 for, you know, I don't know, six or nine transplants or something like that. And it's, that's, that's painful. So when you see somebody just chopping them, oh, that's painful. But guess what? I buy my cabbage seed by the ounce. So I seeded this thickly and I went through and I thinned out and now I'm on my second round of thinning out. I've got three feet between rows so the cabbages in the row can be a foot and a half or something like that apart but it's not painful. Each one of these cabbages cost me a fraction of a cent. I can afford to be choosy to pick out some nice cabbages and to take these out in between and these guys are food so it's really, it's not that bad. Now, earlier on, I did another trick with these. So we're going to teleport over to the other garden and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so right here, I've got these three cauliflowers right in a row. And this one, maybe, maybe I just, maybe I just feel like saving it. I actually did a lot of this a little earlier in the season over the last couple of weeks. Divide one out and say, hey, there's a gap and I could fill in the gap because sometimes stuff gets eaten. Sometimes you have a new bed that you've just dug and hey, you can take your own transplants out of there. Huge benefit to just way over seed and then to just carefully dig under it with a trowel or a machete and pull out one like this and then, you know, you just dig a hole and you stick it in and you just fill that gap in, water it real well, and voila, you have just fixed a gap in the row or planted a new bed and you didn't pay extra for it. So you don't necessarily have to just turn around and chop them all off. You can also take some of them out when they're younger in particular. It works better when they're about that big if they get uh, too big, they don't really transplant all that well and they're not likely to make you quite as good of a harvest. But when you have that smaller root system and smaller plant, you transplant them, you water them in for a week or so, make sure that they don't get wilty and damaged, and then you can fill in the gaps or plant a brand new bed and make everything nice and even down the rows. When in doubt, err on the side of wide. You might think you're going to get a way better harvest by having lots more plants. 
But there's a point when the plant's roots start to touch beneath the ground and they start to compete for resources and they start to send each other signals that say, hey, you're in my space, move out of here. And you really don't get the yields that you think you're going to. Sometimes I think we, we don't even give our chances, you know, give our plants the chance to grow to what their actual capacity is. I learned about this uh, while I was working on Steve Solomon's book, Water Wise Gardening, which is going to be published soon from Good Books Publishing. And he says we don't even get to see the genetic potential of a lot of plants. You could get a broccoli head this big on one plant that's been thinned out well, or you can get some little heads like this off of six plants that are close together. And those six plants that are close together still don't yield you the sheer amount of broccoli florets that you get from one well-spaced plant that's got lots of resources. So it might seem a little extreme that I've got three foot in between my rows and that here I am chopping the living daylights out of everything in between and giving them tons of space. But I want big broccoli and again, seeds are cheap. And I don't like to have to come out here and water and feed them and you know, baby them a lot. So water spacing means they are easier to take care of. So I try to get on them and thin them in successive rounds. The first time I thinned through a bunch of transplants I took out a bunch of them like I was showing you in the last row and transplanted them out into other beds and filled in the gaps. This time, now that they've gotten pretty big in between, I'm just chopping them out of here and we will eat them. Don't run away. Stay here and eat my cabbages. There are so many incredible reasons why you should thin your garden. It's like one of those blogs, you know, like the XYZ garden home blog dot reviews dot XYZ or whatever. <laughs> Right, so you read it and you're like, oh yeah, this is one of those broken English messed up blogs that's really just an excuse to put a bunch of Amazon Associates links. No, seriously, seriously. There really are bazillions of reasons to, to thin, but I could only think of about three of them for this video. So we're just sticking with those and we're just hammering down on them. It's not really wasteful, okay? You plant lots and lots of seeds, you can eat the thinnings, you can compost the thinnings, you can give the thinnings to your chickens, uh, you can give them to your goats, it doesn't really matter that much. And some of them you could just even dig out and transplant when they're small enough to do that with. So the seeds are cheap, and by thinning you get much better plant growth, and if you give them enough spacing you don't need to water as much, you don't need to feed as much, you get full genetic expression or close to it in your garden so the plants will give you nice big yields. Don't be a wimp about it and just let a bunch of stuff sit next to each other. Thin a little wider than you want to and just see how it works. If you think, oh, I'm just gonna cut them to like this far. No, do them like that far and see what happens. I just challenge you to do that. And it, I think you'll find it very interesting. Wider spacing, if you can manage it, if you can find it in your heart to kill a bunch of stuff, it's really totally worth it. Now, thanks for joining me today. Um, if you want to get a Compost Your Enemies shirt, I have the t-shirt link below. It comes in black and it comes in this really gaudy, horrible green that just says, I am a good gardener and I don't care who knows. Also, Garden Heat, a Jack Broccoli novel, the second installment in the gardening thriller series starring the intrepid Jack Broccoli is now available in paperback and it is the best way to tell someone I love you this Christmas season. Catch you all next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green.
gonna take this one and I'm gonna pick it out and I'm gonna put it over here. And I'm gonna pick this one up and I'll put it over here. You're so, you're so silly. I don't think you know how to do this.